this is Alice K. Ruckelhaus with Threshold of Hineni, and this is going to be my last video about my dad. I realized as I was getting this stuff ready that <laughs> if I try to tell everything that I remember, then um, it's going to be like way, way, way too many videos, and you know, I need to keep this a little bit shorter. So I'm going to kind of skip way ahead. Um, to the late 20th century. Um, my parents, oh gosh, it seemed like there was something I wanted to talk about before that though. Well, if I remember, I will. Oh, well, okay, so one funny thing. When, when my dad was, when he had his, his firm, um, he did a lot of auditing of churches and stuff, and I think he had done that before, and that was another thing that, um, was a good experience for us was that since he had so many clients who were pastors sometimes he'd like to go visit their churches you know they always invited him and stuff and so we went to some of these churches that were very very different from our own churches and so we got to experience that which again is something I don't think a lot of people get to do a lot of kids growing up um, so like I remember going to this black church, I think it was in San Francisco, you know, and Mennonite brethren, you know, they're pretty staid. They just kind of, you know, the worship is not rowdy at all. Um, I'm fairly sure that people hold the hymnals to keep themselves from raising their hands <laughs> because it's like, you know, all the verses to the hymn, you really don't need those hymnals, but everybody holds them anyway. And, you know, there's oh my goodness, heaven forbid that anybody raises their hand and stuff. And so, um, yeah, so going to a church that was like really loud and boisterous and rowdy was almost scary, you know, because it was not what we were used to at all. And, but it was good, you know, it was good to go to that and, and to experience those different things. That's, I know we went to other churches too, but that's the one that I remember. And it's kind of funny because I ended up being Pentecostal and I was part of a black church. I mean, very actively involved in a black church for a number of years too. So, and I think that, you know, that type of, you know, visiting different churches and everything, I think that it opened me up to a lot of different experiences in my life and and not being you know stuck with one thing but being able to explore some and everything and also feeling like it was acceptable you know because my parents set that example of it being acceptable to you know that that other people worshiped differently than we did and you know i think that was really good um so what was i going to say so like in I think it was 1998 or 1997, I think, my dad decided to retire. And, you know, it was definitely time for him to retire. And so he and my mom went on a trip. And I think at that point they were just kind of looking, but not specifically like looking, looking for a house. But they ended up in Paso Robles and decided that they loved it there and they found a builder and they were able to really customize a home. And so they went for it. And so um, while that house was being built, because they sold their house in Campbell, um, their friend, my mom's friend, Joni, um, who lived in San Jose at the time, invited them to come and live with her while their house in Paso Robles was being built after they had to be out of the house in Campbell. And one thing that happened, actually I think this happened when they were moving from Campbell to Joni's house, was my dad ended up in the hospital with gallbladder problems and he had to have his gallbladder removed. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, it was kind of scary. I remember, I remember I was memorizing Psalm 91 at the time and I sat there at the hospital just saying Psalm 91 over and over and over. That's a really good comforting psalm for when, um, you know, you're afraid that your dad might not make it through surgery or something, you know? Um, to me, he was really old at that time. He was probably not much older than I am now. Um, you know, but it seems like, oh my gosh, this is like so horrible. I mean, and any surgery is really serious. So 
anyway, it was just kind of a scary time for me. I didn't want to lose my dad or anything. And I mean, who wants to lose their dad? And so, yeah. So anyway, so there was that. And then they moved to Paso Robles into this wonderful, wonderful house, really cool house. Um, and my cousin and her husband came down a couple of times to do more personalizing to it. And, um, let's see what else. So yeah, so like my mom went on a few of her other walks, including the big one that was like 14 and a half months long across the U S. And so, you know, they were apart for most of that time. So I think my mom went home once and my dad came out to visit her like two or three times, but mostly, you know, they were apart and that was really hard. And my dad would always tell people that his wife walked out on him <laughs> and, um, you know, but he stayed at home and, and worked so that she could go on this and everything. Um, and held the, you know, held the fort down and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh gosh, I had some things in mind and now they've just like gone away because my memory is so bad. Shoot. Um, yeah, so, well, my dad, he got two things. He started doing, I think he started this after he was in Paso Robles, but I could be wrong. He may have started it while he was still in San Jose. Um, he started doing barbershop quartet. He had always loved to sing and he was always a really good singer. Um, but, you know, he had a little bit more time and Paso Robles is, there's a lot of, I wouldn't say it's a retirement community, but there are a lot of retirees there. And so, you know, so there are things like barbershop quartet stuff and everything. And so he was able to do that and do some traveling with that. And then he also got involved in genealogies. And I think he started doing that um, back in Santa, San Jose, Campbell. Um, but he started really researching his family tree. And his brother, who had been Mormon, had done a family tree all the way back to Adam. But, you know, not with any details or anything, just names and maybe dates, I'm not sure. But my dad really wanted to know like more of the stories and everything and so he's done a lot of research he's traveled i mean when when they went to czech republic i don't think it was specifically to do this i know they went one time because they were they sang in a wedding of a friend in switzerland and another couple times they went to czech republic with a group from their church to teach english and I'm not sure if they've been any other times. I can't remember how many times they've been. But, you know, while they've been there each time, they've done some research and dad found our ancestral village and um, he hired somebody to translate some things and do some research for him there in, in Czech Republic. Um, yeah, so, I mean, he's just done a lot of research on that and research here in the States when he gets... You know, when he has to go someplace for a conference or something, if there's some genealogical research he can do while he's doing that, he'll do it. And, uh, you know, visit graves and get, you know, locations and stuff on that. There's like different groups that keep track of stuff like that. And he, I think that he, um, you know, registers grave sites or something for those. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but, you know, getting the exact location, because when you go to a, to a, um, to a cemetery to look for somebody, it can be really hard to find them. And so, um, organizations like that make it a little bit easier. Okay. This one I'm having kind of a hard time figuring out how to put together. So I'm going to just set this aside and I'll do it while I'm not on camera because it's kind of hard for me to think while I'm doing this, while I'm talking and while I'm on camera. Um, so, yeah, so he's been like really, really involved in researching and, you know, he's always loved history and stuff. Oh, okay, so I don't know why, I'm, why this memory suddenly came. Um, and I don't know how meaningful it'll be to anybody else, but 
he loves Fiddler on the Roof and Man of La Mancha. Man of La Mancha was actually part of their theme for their um, Christian Marriage Fulfillment Ministry. It was really neat, the stuff that they did with that. But um, I just, I remember my dad uh, often singing, if I were a rich man, yada da 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 and doing that dance that Tevya does. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, so, I think I've hit the main points. I mean, there's so much that I had to skip because otherwise it, I'd just be talking forever and ever and ever. But this gives you a good idea of the kind of person that my dad is. I'm sure that when I turn the camera off, I'm going to remember something really important. But I'm going to just trust that the things I was supposed to tell about, I told about. So anyway, I love you, Dad. And I will do a flip through of this journal. I might do some other you know, things where I'm not talking about you, but I'm just talking about other things where I'm working on the journal. Um, so I don't know if you want to see me working on it, you can, but I don't think you probably do. Um, but I'll do a flip through and I'll explain like why certain things are the way that they are and um, the features of it and stuff and give you some ideas of how you can use it. But of course, you are welcome to use it any way that you want. I love you. Have a happy Father's Day. Mwah. Love you all. Bye-bye.